Welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for this session. Uh, we're just gonna give our pre um, parents and family members one to two minutes to log in and then we can definitely get started. Um, you are all very used to um, these sessions and our chat function. So you can start chatting in the function in the chat box. Um, we'll get started in about a minute or two. And I still see our attendees are coming in and we're already starting to get questions. So that's, that's great, thank you. All right, perfect. So I think the participant number has leveled off a bit, so I will get started. Um, welcome everyone again to um, the Surfing at Caltech session. Um, if you were not able to join us yesterday for our welcome session, let me introduce myself really quick again. My name is Carla Arriaga. I am the Senior Assistant Director in the Undergraduate Admissions Office, and I'm also the coordinator of PFE, um, PFEX. So this session will focus on our most popular research program that you all I'm sure are very familiar with, um, which is the Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship. Leading this session is um, Maria Manzanares. So if I can please have Maria introduce yourself, tell us your role or your roles, um, how long you have been at Caltech and what is your favorite part about working with Caltech students. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Carla. Um, my name is Maria Manzanares. I'm the assistant director at the student faculty programs office, also known as the surf office. I've been at Caltech for five years. And what I enjoy the most about working at Caltech is working with the students. They really make um, every day worthwhile. Um, and they're all here. And I really, I really enjoy them. Thank you. And we have four amazing student panelists. So I'll let them introduce themselves quickly. So we'll start with Polina. If you can please um, tell us your preferred pronouns, your option and minor, if you have a minor, your year and a brief description of your last year. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Paulina. I go by she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a junior at Caltech studying mechanical engineering and minoring in aerospace. And uh, I've been doing surf for like three years now. I started with my first surf freshman year, did a surf last year, and we'll be surfing again this year. Uh, this year is my surf experience. Um, I guess I'll talk about this year's because I'm more involved with that. I'm surfing with the Dr. Sunjo Chung, um, in, who is a professor in aerospace engineering, and we'll be working together on the uh, Caltech submission for the um, NASA Big Idea Challenge, where we're developing a uh, electrodynamic shielding system to mitigate dust on the lunar surface. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you, Andrew. I'm Andrew. I'm a geophysics and English literature double major. My pronouns are he, him. Um, let's see, my most recent surf was with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, modeling the geochemical interiors of icy ocean worlds in Python software. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. I've done a surf every year. I've been at Caltech. Um, so I've had the privilege to even travel to Singapore with surf. Perfect. And let's move on to Annabelle. Hello, my name is Annabelle Gomez. I am a sophomore. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. 
Um, last year, I last summer I did a surf at JPL where I use machine learning to improve navigation and communication signals. Thank you. And last but not least, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. I'm a CS BEM junior. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. Uh, my last serve was an off-campus surf at Stanford Electrical Engineering, uh, where I worked on automated image quality assessment for magnetic resonance imaging. Um, a TLDR for that is that MRI is a, a non-invasive imaging modality, so it suffers from a lot of motion errors when you acquire the image. And so most imaging centers require trained doctors to, <coughs> to review these images to see if they can be actually used for patient diagnosis. Um, so here I had the opportunity to use my computer science knowledge to uh, harness like recent advances in computer vision to automatically classify these images. Great, thank you all. Um, you'll have definitely um, another opportunity to share more about your experiences later, but right now I'll hand it off to Maria and Maria, you can start sharing your screen and start your presentation. Thank you. Let me do the share screen. Are you able to see the screen? Thanks. I'm working off of two screens, so sometimes it's a bit confusing. Um, welcome. The Student Faculty Programs Office coordinates several um, summer. Can you hear me also? Okay. Great. The Student Faculty Programs Office coordinates several summer undergraduate research programs on campus. I have to say that it's perhaps the best job on campus because I get to work with students and faculty doing what they love most, research. SURF is our oldest, our biggest, and the program that most of you will be interested in hearing about. So today we're, we're going to talk about surfing Caltech style. And next slide. Um, what is SURF? SURF is Caltech's Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program. It was started in 1979 with 18 eager students. Since then, the program has grown tremendously. Last year, we had about 381 surfers. This program is unique from almost every other summer research program out there because it's modeled on the grant-seeking process. This is important because as future scientists and engineers, you'll be writing grants, drafting research proposals, and conducting research throughout your career. The founders of SURF felt that this was important, not only that students had an opportunity to engage in research, but also had the opportunity to learn the skills related to writing grants and proposals. What does this process look like? Well, students first need to identify a potential mentor and in collaboration, write a research proposal. That proposal is then reviewed by a panel of faculty reviewers and judged on content, student ability, passion, and enthusiasm for the mentor to work with the student. Awards are made and students conduct 10 weeks of research during the summer. During the summer, they write two short progress reports. At the conclusion of the summer, they write an abstract, final paper, and give an oral presentation at an all-day seminar. Overall, there is a strong emphasis on the communication of one's work. At the core of SURF, there are five main components. Mentorship. The heart of SURF is the relationship between the student and his or her mentors. Caltech faculty, postdocs, research scientists, and even graduate students take mentoring seriously. In a study we did a few years ago, most mentors indicated that they got to where they were academically and professionally because they had good mentoring and they felt compelled to reach back and do the same for young scientists. Collaboration. Surfing is not just a summer job, nor is it what we would call intellectual bo bottle washing. Students collaborate with the mentors to define a project, write a proposal, and carry out the project. Students become full collaborators in the research enterprise. Undergraduates are fully included in the research group as well. Ownership. We have a saying in SURF, which is, 
You get out of an experience what you put into it. SURF encourages students to have full ownership over their work. While students at different academic levels might need different levels of support, SURF students can't just wait around to be told what to do. SURF supports initiative and self-direction within the context of mentorship and collaboration. Passion and exploration. Passion is a word you will hear a lot at Caltech. Surfers have a passion for science, engineering, math, or technology. They have a passion for exploration and learning. SURF offers students an opportunity to explore and find where their true passion lies. Some students do a SURF at the end of their freshman year in a lab. Sometimes they spend the rest of their undergraduate career in that lab. Others try new labs each summer to explore different areas and really hone in on their interest. So we should back up for a minute and talk about a little about why doing undergraduate research is so important and why Caltech places such an emphasis on it. First, it's an opportunity to put classroom learning into practice. It can provide academic and career path clarification. It also helps you understand what science is really like. It provides an academic community of faculty, scholars, grad students, and other undergraduates. It can impact your academic success. You may be more likely to pursue your academic goals. It can also help you get into graduate school. These are photos of two surf mentors. In the top right photo is Dr. Mitchell Gutman, centered among his students. Dr. Gutman is an assistant professor of biology. Over the last two summers, he has mentored five students. In the bottom photo, you'll see Dr. Harry, uh, Harry Gray, Arnold O. Beckman, professor of chemistry and founding director of the Beckman Institute. He has mentored 86 different students for 113 projects. In the past, he has awarded a multi-million dollar grant to continue his groundbreaking work in renewable energy. He has identified an effective and inexpensive way to split water. Here are a few st uh, stats that students are usually interested in. In 2020, there were 381 surfers. Over 79% of all graduating seniors have done at least one surf, and approximately 85 to 95% of Caltech surf applicants are accepted. I imagine a big question many of you have is, can freshmen get a surf? The answer is yes. Faculty want to and expect to work with students. They, they know that you may or may not have prior research experience though. What they look for is passion and enthusiasm in research. 40% of surfers last year were all freshmen. It is usually around 30 to 35% of the entire surf class. Some of you will want to know if you can do surf this summer prior to getting into Caltech. Unfortunately, the answer is no. So where can I surf? Well, you could surf at JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, at any US college or university, or any college or university in the world. Surf isn't all work. There is plenty of fun. Surf is 10 weeks, and most years the Caltech summer is 15 weeks. Most students describe the summer as a more laid back than the academic year, leaving plenty of time for fun. Through our other summer programs, we also have about 200 to 250 students from other universities living on campus, and they're doing research either on campus or at JPL. So there is a great student community on campus during the summer. During the summer, there are seminars, professional development workshops, social and cultural events organized by the SFP office and our house ambassadors. There is always something to do on the weekends. It's important to note that SURF isn't the only way to get involved in undergraduate research at Caltech. Students can do academic year research, research for pay or for credit. Many students also do a senior thesis or a research project. Also, many students take advantage of internships in industry. In closing, there is a lot of information about the program on our website. Please review it, 
Uh, I welcome you to email us if you have any questions. And I also want to thank you for spending this time with us and um, coming to meet us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, that was very helpful. So we'll start with our students. So I know during your introduction, you gave us a brief description of your lecture. So how about um, you all share a little bit more in-depth information um, about your last serve? So let's start with Annabelle. Okay, great. Um, so I'm still currently working on the surf that I started in the summer. Over the past several months, I've been working with senior research technologist, Dr. Chaoxing P at JPL. And like I said earlier, I'm using machine learning to improve navigation and communication signals. More specifically, we are trying to reduce signal reception uh, interruptions that are caused by solar activities, such as like solar flares and coronal mass ejections. And our goal, our overall goal is to increase the accuracy of technology that relies on applications such as global navigation satellite system and GPS. Uh, Jeffrey? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think I covered my surf in a little bit more detail. Um, but yeah, I can definitely uh, go back through. Um, so yeah, I, I worked on automated image quality assessment for MRI, which is um, MRI is one of the most expensive imaging modalities at any hospital. So I one of the big issues is trying to reduce the number of patient rescans you need to go through. And part of that, uh, solving part of that problem is figuring out when an image is good enough and doing so quickly. And so specifically, I, I would use like advances in computer vision and machine learning to kind of create an automatic classification framework for uh, detecting these uh, image qualities. I don't know, I also saw a question on uh, if you have to have any background experience to um, kind of do a surf. I had very little experience, experience in like signal processing or any of the electrical engineering knowledge needed for like MRI. Um, so that summer was like a de decently like a very pleasant experience and very good introduction to that kind of knowledge. Perfect, thank you, um, Polina. And also I see a, a question um, about what sorts of surf projects do MEC E students do? So Annabelle shared hers and then Polina is also MEC E. Uh, yeah, so I'm a mechanical engineer as was just repeated several times. And so I'm doing my third surf this summer and each surf I've done has been in a different lab in a different field. So I could give a brief overview of the different projects I've done if that's more useful. Um, so the first surf I did was uh, with Dr. Tim Colonius, um, who is a professor at Caltech, and he studies fluid mechanics, specifically instabilities and turbulence. And I was really interested in just learning more about fluids and how all that work, even though I didn't take a fluids class at all at that point. And that project was working on modeling the plumes of Enceladus. So Enceladus is one of the moons of Saturn. And in 2005, Cassini, which is one of the spacecraft that NASA sent out to deep space, uh, flew by Enceladus and saw that on the South Pole, there are these like kind of hydrothermal vents or geysers shooting out volatiles and water. And they realized that um, these geysers are originating from a subsurface liquid ocean. And that means that there's like water on this really small moon out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> by Saturn. And so my ta and um, in the future, uh, NASA and JPL, they want to send robotic missions to Enceladus to try and characterize the water and other properties on them and other like physical properties of the moon. And, but to do that, we need to have a better understanding of what the dynamics of those plumes are like. So my task was to characterize uh, the dynamics and mechanisms of those plumes using like different scripts on MATLAB. And before that, like I had no experience using MATLAB and I didn't even understand like what a boundary value problem is because I didn't even take those classes. So that was like kind of an interesting introduction to just uh, learn more about those topics. Last year, I did a serve in more uh, material science related fields and at the intersection of like material science, mechanical engineering and like biomedical engineering. I worked with a professor at MIT to like studied uh, controlled drug delivery uh, devices using polymers. And that was really interesting. Um, most of my work was just reading papers and just learning about existing materials. And at the end, I wrote a literature review. And then this year, I completely switched gears and I'm focusing more on like space engineering topics. And I'm so this year, I'm a part of the design team that is competing in the NASA Big Idea Challenge. And so we're developing a system that we call HOMES, the Habitat Orientable Modular Electrodynamic Shielding System, which is basically a glorified doormat that uses like 
electrodynamic shielding to pull off dust particles from like an astronaut or any other thing. Um, and so my task will be more um, like, so my tasks so far have been regarding material selection and like physical mechanical design. And then over the summer, I'll be designing the electronics box. So I'll have to do a lot of thermal analysis. And I'll also be setting up a lot of like physical tests, like mechanical load tests, vibration tests and all that. Um, so a lot of different fields. <laughs> That's kind of a long answer, but hopefully they gave you some <laughs> information. Yeah, thank you. Andrew? Yeah, certainly. I can go into a, a bit more depth as well. So uh, speaking of icy ocean worlds, right, um, we're really curious about the geophysical interiors and the profiles of icy ocean worlds, sort of how they're composed, how they evolved, and what that might imply for the origins of life. And in order to assess this, we have to really understand at, at a very macro level what chemical reactions could be taking place at high pressures and high temperatures. And so what I did is refined a model called the Deep Earth Water Model, uh, which is designed for Earth's interior, into a more Python flexible application that you could use to really extrapolate into a range of high pressure and high temperature applications. Uh, and so I also saw a question in the section about um, can you publish research papers as an author or co-author? So through my research this summer, we're actually submitting our paper um, as soon as I provide the new figures that we need. Um, so realistically, like in two weeks, and I'm going to be the first author on that paper. And it's quite common. I'm likely going to be able to co-author on three papers from my last surf as well, which studied relative sea level change in the Philippines. And so you definitely can get a publication out of it. Perfect. Thank you. So Paulina and Andrew both answered another question um, that came through earlier, and that is if you're able to do uh, multiple serves or if you're able to serve every year. So yes, that's definitely possible. Um, Andrew, you mentioned doing a surf abroad. Can you share with us that experience? Yeah, definitely. So when I was talking about relative sea level in the Philippines, uh, okay, flashback to sophomore year. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, realistically really wanted to experience something new and exciting. So I went to the surf office, talked to the director, Candace. Uh, I was like, hey, Candace, what are some options for me to really explore the world or do something cool with surf? She says, I know the perfect person for you in Singapore. And, and back at this time, I could not have pointed out Singapore on a map if I tried to, like had no idea where it was, uh, but signed up, started talking to the professor, uh, flew out to Singapore by myself, uh, didn't know a single person there, didn't know anything about the culture, showed up, took a, a taxi halfway across the island um, and spent the amazing two months doing research, learning about Singapore uh, and really being on the ground, having to like immerse myself in a new culture because I was just working there. Like it wasn't a study abroad experience or anything guided. Like I was just a researcher. I got some amazing work. I got to go to a conference AOGS out in Singapore as well. Um, and so if you're trying to look, you can go near campus, um, you can go off campus, and you can go far off campus too, sir. Thank you, Andrew. And I think um, the JPL uh, questions are very popular because we just had our JPL panel before this. Um, so Annabelle, if you can answer the following question, um, how, did, how did you find a mentor um, for SURF project at JPL? For my first mentor for this past surf, uh, the SFP office does have an announcement of opportunities page that you can go link to. It has all the mentors information and phone numbers. Um, it's not as well, I guess, in my experience, there has to be a lot of persistence when you're finding a JPL mentor. Uh, I sent out the first time like 30 emails and most of the time they're really busy. So you're not always going to get a response from everyone you email. So then I like resulted to cold calling all like at least eight people a day until I was finally able to find a mentor in a research project that I was interested in to be able to have me uh, take me on as a mentee. It was a bit hard at freshman year because most mentors, I suppose at JPL, it, it's a bit harder when you're a freshman to get something at JPL. So you just have to like, keep on trying until you finally find a mentor who is willing to work with you. Um, this past year or this surf, surf opportunity, I went and they oftentimes have the informations of various people in different groups at JPL. 
if you're interested in them. So I went and I Googled the robotics group at JPL and sent out about 50 emails to everyone in, in that list, just whoever was working on a project to see if there was anything that they had for an intern. So that was not listed on the SFP office, but I was able to find some exciting projects working on Mars 2020 and on the stuff that they're doing right now after launching Perseverance and on the Insight robotic arm. So it's just a lot of emailing and cold calling and uh, reaching out to people. Thank you, Annabelle. That's actually very important for you to share that with the pre -frosh. It's very important to reach out and to keep trying and not give up, even if you don't hear back from um, the people that you believe in. So um, I see another very popular question is about writing proposals. So Jeffrey, would you please let us know what the process is like and what resources were available for you? Yeah, for sure. So I think one of the, the biggest questions I get about surf every year is just because I think it's very daunting to kind of have to write a proposal in a field that you're maybe not the most familiar with. You might be a frost just entering. And so the resource that I had available is that once you match with a mentor, they essentially, you're making a commitment to go work for them, but they also are making a commitment to mentor you. And so with that commitment comes stuff like helping you find a literature to start reading up on to get you familiar. Um, I wasn't, when I started at Stanford, I wasn't familiar with a lot of like um, deep learning frameworks. So my mentor sent me a bunch of like cool lessons or cool courses, uh, webinars that I could look through. And so part of that also comes um, with like the proposal writing. And so the way we did it is, it is, it is kind of for you to like self-drive, like you do have to, you will likely have to like write the drafts yourself, but your mentor will usually give you pretty good like sets of iterative feedback and you can hone your proposal into something that um, more closely reflects what the actual project is going to be. Thank you. Um, so a couple questions for Maria. So um, first question, since summer is a non-academic term, do students live on campus when doing a surf at Caltech? If so, where on campus do they live? Um, and do the students have an option to live off? Uh, that's a great question. So um, typically in a normal year, um, students would be offered an opportunity to live on campus, which also brings a whole new set of activities and engagement with the campus. Um, so housing is available for both JPL, uh, surfing at JPL and surfing at Caltech. Uh, students are uh, able to live off campus if they choose to. Um, I do recommend um, students consider uh, living on campus because of the activities, uh, the house ambassadors, um, all the activities the students plan um, happen on campus. So there's a whole nother layer of engagement and uh, ways for students to connect with uh, Caltech undergrads, the administration and with the campus. And another question for you, Maria, is about um, doing serves at other universities, including international universities. So if you can please share with us um, what that process is like and how often students decide to serve abroad. So um, students that are interested in surfing abroad, sometimes we have partnerships with certain schools or we have made uh, relationships with certain universities. A lot of the times our strongest um, network is Caltech alumni. So when we have Caltech alumni working uh, abroad in different universities, they uh, want to mentor a Caltech student. So we work uh, with the students closely. First, they identify that they wanna go off campus. We have info sessions for these students as to how they could prepare and what to expect. And then we work with them one-on-one -on -one to help identify professors, uh, faculty, alumni at the different institutions and get them at least an E introduction and the students really do the rest. Um, but the mentors usually uh, will work with the student to establish that communication, the timeline, housing, and how the surf will uh, be conducted within that 10 week period. Thank you. Now going back to the students, um, there is a question about how, um, could you describe how intensive your surfs were? So for example, how many hours per week were each of you working um, on your surfs? And we can just start with, let's see, Jeffrey. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it definitely varies based on what you're interested in. I think um, I was already interested in becoming a CS major and I think I chose a surf that was more computational in nature. So I think for me, um, I, I just decided to commute from home. So a lot of my um, work time was more just like 
at the laptop, not really in like a wet lab or anything, maybe go into office like a couple times. Uh, but I know for like some of my friends who've done like more wet lab stuff like chemistry and bio surfs that they do require a little bit more work. So I, I'd say it varies a little bit. Um, if you do have more stuff, I'm sure we can probably find you someone who's like in your field of interest that can maybe give you a better opinion. Any of the other students can answer the same question, please. Approximately how many hours were you spending in your last serves? Oh, it, it really depends on the surface, what I was going to say. Um, my last surf, I think I was pretty consistently doing about, you know, in the 40, maybe slightly over on some weeks. Um, but because it's remote, like, like it's, it's hard to track that too. Like productive hours and non-productive hours sometimes blend a little bit um, throughout the day. But uh, when I was in Singapore, it, it had a much higher variation of like a normal week would be 40. And then at the end, as we sort of pushed to get everything ready for publication, I was doing a couple 60 hour weeks. I don't think that that's really common necessarily, but it, it does have the potential to happen. Okay. So have any of you um, had opportunities out to present your, your surf various conferences? If you can help, if someone can share that experience. I guess right now my uh, mentor and I, or I, I guess it also depends on what your mentor is used to presenting at or what, they've, what they're doing, what they're involved in. Right now, my mentor was involved. He um, often presents at the Institute of Navigation Conference. And so then right now we just submitted, we just finished submitting an abstract to present at their conference later this year and then subsequently work on a paper for that. So I guess it also depends on your mentor, but I'm sure you can also bring it up to your mentor if you're if there's something that you want to present at or if you're interested in something, I'm sure your mentor would be open to it. Anyone else have um, experience? Oh, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, at least in my experience, I've presented at the American Geophysical Union Conference twice. Um, and I'm going to be presenting at the Goldschmidt conference over the summer, um, this upcoming summer, which is technically in France if, if travel is open. So uh, fingers crossed there, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have experience with conferences? Yeah, I, I have, oh, ooh, I think Paulina was about to go. My bad. Um, yeah, so uh, my, my work is at uh, Stanford. I ended up presenting at uh, one of the IEEE conferences, I think the International Symposium on Biomedical Imaging. I think one of the things to know with the SURF is that it's also a lot like you get what you put into it. And I think like one of the good things you can also do is just like set expectations very early. If you're very interested in presenting your work at a conference or getting a published work, it's usually good to like set the expectations for like kind of work you wanna do, um, stuff like that, just so you can make sure you get a publication if that's your goal. Now we're going to share. Um, I haven't gone to a conference yet, but I will be in two weeks, uh, a virtual like student conference hosted by the AIAA. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, that is exciting. So another question um, for students, do you all, have you all worked with graduate students? How often do you work with graduate students? Anyone can answer this. Um, I could take that one. So my, first surf with Dr. Colonius. So I worked really closely with um, actually a student who recently graduated from his lab. He um, got his PhD the summer before I joined the lab and he works at JPL currently. So I worked very closely with him and I also worked very closely with one of uh, the postdocs in his lab and they provided a lot of support in like debugging my code and also just teaching me the like ins and outs of <laughs> space engineering and fluids mechanics. So that was really interesting. There was also one other undergraduate student who was working in the lab with me and we also worked pretty closely together. Even though we were working on separate projects, we did support each other when applicable. Anyone else would like to share your experience working with graduate students? Oh, actually, Andrew, um, did you work with graduate students abroad? Was that a little different? Uh, yes and no. I, I'd say like I worked alongside graduate students but we all had sort of separate projects uh, in, in different regions of the Philippines we were working on. And so it was more that we were doing the same work, not doing, uh, or that I was being supported by graduate students. 
Jeffrey or Annabelle? For sure. One, one thing to maybe know, I think, with surf mentorship, I think one thing is like, I think who, when you apply for a surf, it usually is like the, the PI who will agree for your funding and like those logistics and stuff. But oftentimes, like they might be a little bit busy. So oftentimes you might have a, you, your PI will be like a mentor reviewing your proposal and everything, but you also might be mentored directly by a grad student. Um, when I worked at Stanford, I was mentored directly by a postdoc. Um, so, so in that sense, you probably will be working like closer, like day to day with um, a grad student, but maybe meeting weekly with the professor. Perfect. So um, I know Annabelle, you you mentioned continuing your surf after the, the 10 weeks. Um, so there is a question about that and how can you, or are you allowed to continue your surf past that um, summer 10 week period? Um, does this depend on the type of research you're doing and what was your experience like? Yeah, I think it depends on what you're doing with your mentor. Uh, so the surf does end after 10 weeks, but after that, like with JPL, you can ask your mentor to be uh, hired as a year round intern or as they have various different programs at JPL that they have you under. So then you would just talk to your mentor and get that all worked out. My situation was uh, a bit unique, I suppose. My mentor didn't necessarily have the funding to bring me on uh, for the school year like I wanted to, but we were getting some really exciting results. And so then through like a lot of um, Zoom webinars and I guess going back with Caltech and JPL, uh, we were finally able to reach an agreement. So now I was hired on as an admissions ambassador and in exchange, um, I do research at JPL and blog about it on the Caltech admissions blog. And so then it really depends on your situation that you have and uh, what your mentor can afford or what they are looking for or what they need you for. But it is definitely possible to be able to extend your research. I know lots of my friends have been uh, do research during the summer that they've been that they started during the um, that they started earlier as a surf. Great. And following up that question of, you know, continuing your surf research during your academic terms or just in general doing research during your academic term. So how do you balance that workload? It's a lot of uh, talking with, I guess, agreeing with your mentor ahead of time, how much time you plan to be committing to the project. Obviously, they understand that school is a priority, but at the same time, they want to be getting something out of your contribution to the project because they're spending money on you to be able to be there and contributing. So it, it is a lot of uh, time management to be able to make sure that you're going to be setting like the standard, like at least eight hours a week um, working on, on your project, which does get a little hard during the term. But as long as you, I mean, I find it helpful to have weekly check-ins with my mentor. So that keeps me accountable and gives me like short little deadlines so that I'm able to um, continuously meet our goal every week. Perfect. Thank you. And then we are, we do have another question um, about the surf proposal. So can you all share with us how long um, it took you all to complete your surf proposal? Approximately, was it different for each surf? Uh, I think, again, this really depended on me and on my mentor. Uh, my, my mentor freshman year was, was very specific about what she wanted in the proposal. And so it probably took the better part of three or four weeks of back and forth before we landed on something. Uh, this last year, I wrote one draft of the proposal. My mentor JP Sell said, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much good. I made some copy edits and you can submit it. And so it took me maybe a couple of days to go through the same process. And so it, it really does depend, but I, I don't think it will take you longer than a week, I guess, usually. Polina, is your experience similar? Uh, yeah, kind of the same. So the very first surf proposal I submitted, it took a little bit longer because I was just new to writing proposals in the first place. Um, so I think that took me about two weeks. Um, but this year's, it took a lot less time, be mainly because it was based off a proposal I submitted before in December. And then my professor didn't even check it. He just said like, okay, you're good. <laughs> so it just depends on like what your relationship with your mentor is. Jeffrey, I, I saw you laughing too. <laughs> it was your experience different. Yeah, for sure. I think I think my mentor is probably closer to what Andrew's Frosh mentor was like. I think uh, the first time, I think some of the pre-frosh might have already seen this because I think I sent pictures once or maybe the Frosh from, from this current year. 
But uh, when I got my first draft back, I think like more than like two thirds, like he had track changes on or something. And more than like two thirds of it was just like copy edited, which is like not anything to take personally, just some, some mentors have like a specific way that they want to see the proposal. And I later on found that the reason why they want it in such a way is because they also use, I think some mentors also use proposals to directly apply for funding for sources to fund your surf. And so in that sense, they, they, some surfs require some more polish in the proposal, but it's nothing that like isn't doable while you're also taking classes. It's um, as long as you make sure to start on time, you should be good. Perfect. That's actually very helpful. Thank you. So aside from surf, um, what are, have any of you participated in any of the other research programs available at Caltech? Before surf? Oh yes, go ahead, Pauline. Oh, go ahead. No, I have, We're oh, going to talk okay. about the same program. Um, it's okay. They both year, yeah. probably had yeah. different experiences. You can both answer. Um, I guess we could like tag team. Do you want to start? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, Caltech does have a freshman summer undergraduate research institute that you can apply for. So the summer before you start freshman year, you are allowed to uh, get your partnered up with a mentor at Caltech and you get to do or JPL and you get to do research for five weeks. And then at the same time, you're also learning some of the math that you, or get an intro to some of the math that you would be doing at Caltech. And so then through that, through that program, I got to work at the Caltech Advanced Mechanical Bipedal Experimental Lab or the Amber Lab. And I got to work on a force sensitive resistor for an exoskeleton that they were developing. And then I got to do um, gait and metabolic cost testing. So it was really fun because I got to be in like a huge exoskeleton suit and like have that walk me around the lab. Um, but yeah, that was a really great experience. And in that case, I did have my mentors be uh, grad students. Um, and so then I worked more closely with them every day, checking in with them. And then they were like teaching me different articles or different background research or guiding me in the current thing that I was doing. Uh, so I also participated in the same program, FSRI. Really good program if you're admitted into Caltech, definitely look into it. Uh, but my project was different. I worked in the Ravi Chandran lab group to study fracture mechanics, specifically like the fracture patterns of like a crack propagating through a hydrogel polymer. So basically like if you break jello, how does the crack look? Um, and so I learned a lot about like different imaging techniques and how to do like digital image correlation on MATLAB. Um, so that was an interesting experience and a good introduction to like how research works because I never had that before. Thank you. There's another question about um, doing your surf at Caltech your first year. Would you recommend that you're doing a the first year at Caltech or looking outside? I don't know. What you can do. Uh, I mean, at least in my experience, I did my first one back home at CU Boulder after my first year. Um, I don't think I, I really missed anything fundamentally from that, but there is a certain community that sometimes builds out of the first surf. And so it comes down to a personal choice of sort of where you want to do it or what fits best within your own expectations. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can add on to that a little bit. I think one of the things is, um, it's a, I think it's a little bit different this year just because we haven't really had an on-campus experience, but I think I specifically was interested in doing a surf off-campus just because I think one thing, well, because Caltech is so academically rigorous, if I think being in the same place for almost a year would probably be, at least for, for me, like a little bit exhausting. I think it'd be hard to like um, split the difference between the academic year and like summer break. And so I decided just to do one back home as well. Okay. And, and Carla, oh, yes. can I just add something? Oh, yeah. um, we get a lot of freshmen that ask, should I surf off campus or on campus? And I always tell students there's advantages to uh, surfing on campus as freshmen, simply because um, your first year you're you know, in, immersed in your academics. And I think that the summer is a, re a really good opportunity to start establishing some roots with faculty and really growing your academic network. So I feel that that first summer after freshman year is very critical for students to um, start learning how to navigate conversations with mentors, starting to create those strong relationships with faculty. So I tell students, th these are the faculty that are gonna help advocate you for your second opportunity and uh, moving forward. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, and thank you very much. And that also does um, show and tell the, you know, 
brief brush that the SFP uh, office is available to to chat about this, you know, early in advance, way before you even start applying to serve. So they are available um, just to, um, you know, talk to you, walk through the process, and then to give you options and see if that it will be the best option for you to either um, surf on campus your first year or outside. Um, going back to Annabelle, since you mentioned a little bit about um, emailing people, emailing mentors, emailing other, you know, to try to find um, a project. So I think they, the prefresh really want to know um, what should they include in those emails? Did you include a CV? Um, yeah, give, if you can give us a little bit more information, please. Yeah, with writing the emails, I drafted like a, a very standard, I guess, CV where I talked about, um, I mean, I, every everyone was semi-personalized, so I would like talk about the project and how interested I was in their project, and then I would go on and make it as easy. I mean, these people are really busy, so you want to make it as easy as possible for them to be able to see what you can contribute to their project. So I try to make it, I try to highlight the skills that I had and the experience that I had or and or my passion for the project to make that really clear so that they could see what I'd be bringing um, if they brought me on as a mentee. And I also made sure to attach a resume with every one of those emails. Uh, so yeah, you want to you be as, as specific or as clear as possible as what you can bring to the table because you want to make sure that they, it's clear what how you um, could contribute and better their, I mean, better the project so that they can reach their overall goal. Um, so what about, um, you know, students that are having a hard time finding a mentor? What tips can you give them? Um, let's see, Jeffrey, maybe you can tackle this one first. Yeah, for sure. So I think there, there are a bunch of avenues. One is like, um, for example, if you do like FSRI, a lot of, I, I know a couple students who just continue to do year round research with their mentor and end up doing another surf, that, that could be one option. Um, other options are like if you if you take class with a certain professor, you could inquire um, either them or their graduate students and figure out uh, if there's opportunities there. Um, there are also like a lot of other avenues. I think um, there's the announcements of opportunities page, which is where I found my off campus surf. Um, and then beyond that, there's there's always like the strategy of like cold emailing. I think when I was considering surfs, I also like was considering surfs that weren't explicitly listed just by contacting professors and like, um, looking at uh, professors' research pages, and they're usually like they're, there's a fair bit of funding, so like the usually like there there will be an opportunity for you if you can like show interest and like um, show that you're you're willing to like work work for it. But um, in my experience, I think like I, I I don't know any of my friends who have gone like a surf that they like really really didn't want. I think like um, in, in my experience, everyone everyone's like at least been like um, gone a surf that they were very very interested in. Thank you. So we are coming to the end of this session. I know time goes by really fast. Um, but for Maria, if you can please um, share a piece of advice that you would offer the prefresh as they continue to consider Caltech and the research opportunities that we offer. Um, a piece of advice is I would tell students not to feel they have to narrow down into a specific research field. Uh, Caltech is very interdisciplinary and there's a lot of collaboration within a lot of fields. So I would say uh, be flexible, stay open. Um, you may be doing, um, you know, computational work in a biology lab. You could do coding in physics. So um, and JPL has many other opportunities. So I would say don't feel that you're uh, limited to a certain field or option. Um, Caltech has many opportunities. And one tip I would say is to connect with our office early on. Um, ask for help. We're here to help. Um, we like working with the students. Um, and we like to identify mentors and people that you want to work with. Um, so that's a piece of advice I'd like to share with them. Thank you, Maria. And for the students, um, is there anything you wish you knew or something you wish you did before your first surf? I can start as well. I wish I'd, I talked with the surf office more. Um, I, I don't think my first surf proposal or my methods of searching were exactly what I would have necessarily wanted my freshman year. And I think if I'd had that interaction with the surf office, I might have gotten there uh, and had a, a more productive search time and just made my life easier in general. 
I think uh, I guess something that's really important is just to to remain persistent in your search for your surf. I mean, you might not always get what you wanted at first, but I mean, just keep an open mind. You might find something very interesting or something that you might have not have thought would have worked uh, well with the discipline that you were interested in, and you might find it in another project. Um, so I'd say keep an open mind and remain persistent and don't wait to the last minute to start reaching out to people because it does take sometimes take a while to hear back. Kind of following on through that, um, I remember like my experience as a freshman, I was really nervous to ask for help because I was intimidated by like not knowing enough about the field. But I kind of wish I asked for more help from my professors and mentors who I was working with when I was like confused about some subjects. Like it took me a little while to build up the confidence to ask for help, but they were like super supportive, like, and they knew that I didn't actually like know anything about the field. And so they pointed me to a lot of resources where I could like learn more. Um, so I guess like my piece of advice would be, don't be afraid of your mentors. They're like actually really nice and supportive. They And they want to like help, like teach you new fields and help you like grow. and whatever field you want to study. For sure, I guess like add, adding on to that, I think one of the biggest pieces of advice is I think to maybe consider a surf in a field that maybe isn't exactly what you want to study. I think like there, there's a whole theme of like Caltech's core curriculum wanting you to like branch out to different fields so that when you start to declare third term, you actually have at least a good breadth from every field. And so in a similar vein, like I, I chose to do one in electrical engineering and radiology just because I think that those are super cool high impact problems and maybe they aren't like super close to CS, but um, but something that like I personally found fun. And so if, if you do that, then it makes like the summer work a lot more enjoyable and like it kind of just makes your work ethic like a lot better. Perfect, that was a great way to end this. So I definitely do wanna thank Maria for hosting this session and our um, student panelists. So thank you, Jeffrey, Annabelle, Andrew and Polina for sharing your experiences with us. Um, for our pre um, if you have any further questions, I know we were not able to answer every single one of them, you can definitely reach out to the SFP office. Um, and just a quick reminder for everyone, our next session is the Athletics, Physical Education and Recreation, which will start at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So that's in about eight minutes. Um, so we'll see you in a couple of minutes. And again, thank you very much to everyone in this panel.